It feels amazing. I'm really, really happy uh, after such a long time uh, finally making it. The last two times or the last two years it was kind of heartbreaking because it was twice in a, I'd say like such a close fashion. Like in UL, um, it was like three times we had the chance to go to Worlds and we lost three times. And in Origin, we had all these nice points in Swing Split, but uh, sadly got relegations in the third, third uh, sorry, in Summer Split which means all your points are lost. So now I'm really, really happy that uh, I kind of redeemed myself and made it to Worlds, uh, I think, with a, good, with a strong showing. Excited that they make it and now ready to shake off all that starting warm-up. Now they're calibrated and we'll have to see what Misfits can do. Welcome back to the Wuhan Sports Center Gymnasium for more Worlds 2017. We're turning our attention right to our next battle, Flash Wolves versus Misfits Gaming, who are looking to strike back, as we said, after losing their first game pretty handily. As the teams get ready on stage, let's took a take a look at the starting lineups. On the blue side, it is going to be the LMS's Flash Wolves. That means roaming around in the top lane, it's going to be MMD, Carsa in the jungle, Maple controlling that mid lane, Betty at bot with Sword Art as his support, and Coach State. And their opponents on the red side, it's the EU LCS's Misfits Gaming. In the top lane, Al Fari, their jungler, Max Thor, mid lane, a power of evil, AD carry, Han Summer, their support, Ignar, and Coach Hussein. And seeing what went happened between these teams in their games, it was a tough international debut for Misfits Gaming, who looked completely outclassed by Team WE in their first show. Yeah, it was uh, it was not fun to watch <laughs> as an EU fan. It was like, ah, no, they're getting absolutely yeah. trampled. And Team WE, their bottom lane in particular, seemed to just be a cut above the bottom lane of Misfits Gaming. And I felt like that just individually they struggled, but also as a team, they yet to really find their form on the international stage. And while I do agree they did not look good in their world's debut we have to say that was the first game for any of these players at worlds they're Great all point. rookies to the world Great stage point. they've literally played one game here so we have to give them a little bit of slack let's see if they can bounce back if they can play a better game against flash wolves because they will have to play a much better game against flash wolves if they want to be able to compete i think it's a super good point i mean we see double lift in his wins shaking after those the intensity in these games is crazy yeah, I mean, even just last year for TSM, we looked at TSM, they had two rookies, and that was really something that did yeah. cause some problems for them on the international scene. Misfits has five people that are brand new to this world stage, and they're looking to bounce back, and they're looking to show what they really can do. So let's dig in now to picks and bans. We've already got a few good ones. Yeah, uh, just to remind people, Callista, we see her regularly banned, but yes. one of the big reasons as to why she's banned is because she has no real AD carry counterpart. She <laughs> scales exceptionally well with the art sensor as well, giving her a much earlier power spike. And the engage and save potential that she has with her ultimate is extremely strong. So she's going to continue to sit on the ban list yep. along with some other uh, pretty big power picks. One of the most fantastical choices in that duo combo. Banned right next to her in the Rakan. Tristan as well from Misfits. The Blitz, Jarvan Nar coming in from Flash Wolves. Yeah, the Blitz is going to be one that I think a lot of people <laughs> will scratch their heads at. So maybe you can give us some EU insight on that one. Hit us up. I know that Ignar has played it. Yeah, it's one of his uh, comfort picks. He likes the playmakers. He loves to roam. Often we used to see him brush mobility boots, come in mid lane and be like, hey, Power of Evil, I heard you like ganks. And uh, clearly a lot of respect being shown from Team WWE yesterday and once again, Flash Wolves today. And I think one of the things when you feel that you are a superior team, when you feel that you are the favorites, you want to cut out any sort of wild card. Oh, Blitz Strike sure. is someone who can take over oh, yeah. a game, who can really throw a wrench in the gears, uh, speed up the pace of the game. And I think that Flash Wolves, because they are quite a slow team, don't want something like that in the game. And I love this Cogmore pickup from Misfits Gaming, recognizing this is something that Flash Wolves definitely have their eye on. The Lulu Cogmore is definitely a bit of a danger, especially when you look at yeah. the LPL teams and some of the LMS teams as well. So Misfits, they've done a bit of their own research. And I'd also say, if we're thinking this is going to be a slow game, well, this is fantastic scaling both from bot lane and from the jungle. And Ooh. Jinx is going to get locked in All here right. for Betty. This is one of Betty's specials from the past. He is known for this pick. Uh, Jinx has been uh, more commonly seen over in the LMS. He was actually picked up by Arn from AHQ during the finals, but it's just something that both AHQ and Flash Wolves do share as a champion. Jinx is not something that we usually see over in the West, and I'm really excited to break it down more once we get into the game. 
a Janna being picked up. We figured it would be the trade of the two going into the hands of Ignar. Second phase bans come in here. Misfits Gaming looking like they've got what they want so far. Flash Wolves as well putting together quite an interesting composition with that Jinx. I'm going to be interested to track how these supports want to play lane. Do they feel for Flash Wolves that they can go aggressive enough with this lose to actually create a significant advantage against the Janna, who's typically known as a weaker laner? We have from time to time seen people go for both the Spell Thieves and the Thunderlords in the world's group stage. It has not been common whatsoever, though. Uh, and I feel like if you're not going to play aggressive, then you should just be going for Wind Speakers on Lulu as well. Yeah, I think it, that it makes sense, but it's also a matter of how confident do the bottom lane of Flash Wolves feel, right? Because it was Hansam and Ignar that were the key weakness in yesterday's performance against Team WE. And perhaps Betty and Solart saying, you know what, we can perform at that level. We can shut this duo down. And all we need is Maple and Caster, the famous, the legendary duo of the LMS, to just make their way to the bot lane and play a similar style to that of WE. Final bans. Misfits, 14 seconds left to choose what they don't want to see in the hands of Flash Wolves here. Possibly looking at Maple one more time as the mid lane is and left a little short here on the ban list. And there's the LeBlanc. I mean, to me, there's certainly the ability to go for a Syndra here. A four power of evil, it is a pick that he obviously can play. Uh, would be interesting to see if they want to go for something like an Orianna for that secondary shield and engage uh, as well. Especially when you have two hyper carries battling it out, when one is supported by the additional shield, it can sometimes make the difference. Now, I'm also wondering whether or not Misfits want to give uh, someone like Alfari the counter pick, or whether they're saying, you know what, we think that we're better off just putting him on something safe like a tank, maybe the Cho'Gath, maybe the Maokai. Uh, because remember that things like uh, the Camille and Trundle are also available, which he has been able to bring out in the past, whereas Flash Wolves, they're still yet to lock in their mid and support. And, and they're just going to go for the Orion. A big comfort pick for Power of Evil, known for a few interesting builds as well. And I will say this is a very heavy scaling composition for Misfits. I think that this team is pretty weak across the board in the earlier stages of the game. You know, Orianna, generally someone who needs some time to get to their items. Kogma, people talk about turning online once you have the Rage Blade, which can be difficult to complete. Even the Sejuani, certainly, I feel has less impact than a Gragas oh, in the earlier sure. stages of the game. So this is something that Flash Wolves could look to prey on, as we yeah. know that Misfits had a weak early game yesterday. But if Flash Wolves is going to play patiently, if they're going to play slow, as LMS teams are often known to do, then that gifts just a scaling advantage kind of over to your opponents. See if Misfits can make that happen. We know Flash Wolves played the 50-minute game yesterday. Misfits wasn't able to get the handle on the game, so it didn't go half as long. But this one may stand the test for both of these teams. Corgi is locked in there for Maple in the mid lane as we find out what Misfits Gaming will round out their top lane with. And it could Afari. simply be a Maokai yep. if they want to go for straight up 5v5 team fighting. The Maokai is exceptionally powerful, still on the table. Uh, Trundle, I would be very happy to see it. And thank picked. God it is finally picked. <laughs> to me, this is something that has been so obvious as a pick in this meta, where there are so many tank top laners. Trundle is someone who can have such high levels of effectiveness against a Cho'Gap. You steal so much health away, so many defensive stats from him, especially if you utilize it on the Cho'Gap when they pop that stone plate. Ooh. You could be stealing literally thousands of health, which makes you a super tank and allows your carries to shred through that Cho'Gap. And the big thing for me that gets it, me excited is the fact that Alfari is being put in this carry position. Look, we have the Cogmo, we have the Trundle, we have two of the youngest players on the roster now being put in a position where they have to step up for their team. And the person that's going to be looking to shut them down is Kasa. This guy has such a big impact in the game versus TSM yesterday. He was the one getting Flash Wolves those early leads, but eventually they struggle to close things out. That doesn't take away from the fact, though, that he has that early game impact and has the ability to shut down some of those rookies. Yeah, I mean, both these teams are equipped with very powerful team fighting teams. Uh, certainly, Cho'Gath traditionally has more team fight impact than a Trundle, but Trundle is going to have a side lane advantage. So if Alfari can get ahead, if he can get a side lane advantage for his team, that really can set them up for success because there's not much that a Trundle really loses to 1v1 in a side lane. See a bit of a switch up here between what was played. See Karsa having that Sejuani yesterday. He gets his hand on the Gragas, but that Trundle, we'll have to see if they can lock it down a Varus. In the hands of Betty, goes for the Jinx, so we may see some of the off bot laners for him as he goes through this assortment of his champion pool to try and mix it up for the side of Flash Wolves. As we wait to get into the game, 
players already, and we're just about to be onto the rifts. I think that's just a, a bit of a delay from Han Sama, but I'm sure we're going to be jumping into game relatively soon. This is, in fact, uh, Betty's first competitive game on the Jinx, but as we were saying, yeah. it's, it's a big pick within the region, something that a number of AD carries have been picking up fairly regularly. Arn was the one that did play it in the finals. Clearly, Arn sharing a few of his strats, a few tips <laughs> here and there, and it's really exciting to see because uh, a lot of Western audiences, we don't get to see it. North America, EU, very rarely picked up uh, a champion, largely because when you think of hyper carries, when you think of ADs that sort of excel in the meta, a lot of people think of Cogmore has percentage health damage, Twitch has exceptionally long range, Jinx, she doesn't really have that. She doesn't do that percentage health damage. The range does stack up eventually, but only when she's in that rocket form. So many AD carries in the West don't consider her to be that sort of true hyper carry that champions like Cogmore and Twitch can. But over in the LMS, they value the amount of mobility she can get oh, yeah. with the resets, the bonus movement speed, her tower taking potential is exceptionally strong, and she can have a surprising amount of damage in the laning phase if you manage your rockets properly. And I'd also say, although she does not have percent HP damage like someone like a Kog'Maw, if you get one crit rocket in the later stages oh, of the yeah. game on a squishy champion, that can be half their health. That can yeah. be a game-deciding play, and we'll see if Betty is going to be able to get there. Starts off on the blues. Quite a decent pull here. Looks like it's going to be a fast level two by Betty and Sword Out as they go straight to lane, the top lane. Not necessary for the pull there. It's also worth noting that it is Storm Raider Surge for Han Sama, which I consider to be somewhat Whoa. of a detriment in the laning phase. Yeah. It can be very, very strong. Once you proc it, you're sometimes able to get a surprising amount of damage chasing people down, allowing you to get extra auto attacks in. And I'd also say it's stronger often in team fighting later, but against a Thunderlord's Lu who could be poking you out, if the lane starts going poorly, you don't have the Warlords to fall back on to be able to help sustain you through that. See if that play comes in early for them. It's like a pause for now here as we are on the side of Max Lore roaming around in his jungle as the Sejuani. Afari pushing up pretty hard on the trundle to start things off and see if he can give MMD a little taste of the, his own medicine there. Also want to take note of some of the, the summoner spell choices that we're seeing across the board. TP on top of Maple, not that uncommon on a Corky. Mm -hmm. Usually you will yeah. send him off to a side lane. He can join the fray uh, in any way that he likes because he also has the package too. Whereas Power of Evil on the Orianna kind of locked into the mid lane. You can't really roam around the map. You're not really known for going off into a side lane. So picking up the heal, he's playing much more towards the laning phase. Yeah, and I always am of the opinion that if someone takes a defensive summoner, such as healer barrier, TP is, is kind of the advantageous summoner over that, right? If yeah. you're going to have a barrier versus ignite, maybe that can sometimes give you a bit of an advantage or a way to survive through that. But heal very rarely helps you, you know, pressure for actual kills, right? Sometimes it can make the difference in a committed fight, but oftentimes just having the teleport allows you to pressure your lane opponent in, get an earlier base off, and sometimes get lane pressure through to you. And I think that, uh, speaking of Power of Evil and going for that summoner spell choice, I think he's going to be very pivotal, especially when you think of how this team has found a lot of success in the past. The Maxwell Power of Evil combo was renowned during the playoffs of the EU LCS because this team was very much about trying to set up the mid laner for success. But when you look at Maxwell and his performance yesterday, he was kind of non-existent. That was an extremely low jungle proximity, and yeah. you can just see how little he was able to contribute to his team in that loss against Team W. And to be fair to him, his whole team was, was kind of non-existent in the earlier stages of the game. No one really was getting anything done. And I do think that that's somewhat to do with the jitters that they were experiencing. So they have a game under their belt. They have a lot of comfort picks here. They have a strong team fighting team. And we'll see what can they really get done on the international stage. And what could be a fantastic plan as well. Falling a little bit behind still means Alfari could help to make a play later. You have the shockwave. You have a lot of crowd control. So they have a lot more options, it seems. This day, even or today, I should say, even if falling behind. Top lane still going pretty even. Mid lane, Maple trying to pick up that CS and push in Power of Evil. He's given himself a slight lead here to start the game. Looks like we are also seeing the Thunderlords on top of Sword Out on the Lulu, trying to add that a bit of pressure along with the Jinx. And the thing is, Jinx also has a lot of early game wave clearing against the Cogmore, especially with the Janna too. You don't have that much lane pressure. So both Betty yeah. and Sword Art doing their best to just deny farm away from Han, Sama, and Ignar, along with just applying as much pressure as possible and slowly starting to build this pretty significant CS lead. And this could be a concern because we saw a very similar thing happen yesterday against Team WE for Missy. 
continuously pushing up, knowing they can get in for those extra auto attacks because of the deep vision. Now they'll see Maxor floating around the side, Betty. And Sword Art gonna take a little consideration out of this one as now we see Karsa MMD leaving on that base. And they'll be heading towards the top side of the map. Maxor should be pretty free to roam around here and get that vision in. Interesting to see MMD go back this early. He did push in the wave, so he just took time to go right back to base. Not exactly the most impressive of buys that he's picked up. He got a cloth armor and a little bit of mana, basically. But he did force Alfari to stay around, so he is going to have that little extra bit of stats, which can help to deny any sort of early lane advantage that a Trundle would have in the one turn. Got to compare, man. You got to have that that ten extra armor. Makes the Trundle's life a little bit difficult, uh, especially going for that early Doran's blade as well onto Alfari. He is trying to, uh, to express his dominance over the match, which is very much what you expect from the Trundle. And I'm also going to be very interested to track. What build Alfari goes for? Is he going to go for a Titanic Hydra, which I consider to be more of the kind of team fighting, middle of the road type build? Or is he going to go straight for a Ravenous Hydra, which is almost fully committing to that split push style? Because you do make yourself very squishy in the early team fights if you have to group and you do not have any of the bonus HP from the Titanic to back you up. And I'm fascinated by how he's going to play these fights too. Will he try and go for a flank, try and dive onto the back line? One of the big things about Trundle against low dashes, you know, low mobility carries, is that his pillar is extremely effective. And against someone like a Jinx, it's a great way to lock her down and then get onto the back line. But maybe his focus is just hitting the front line helping the Misfits lineup just shred through the tanks. And one of the interesting things, you talk about the pillar as a way to actually get on them. It's also a great way to keep carries out of fights. You can actually just utilize the pillar on top of the Jinx, push her out of the fight, kite backwards while you're targeting the Cho'Gath. And if the Cho'Gath tries to retreat back towards his back line, you kind of have the pillar in between you, you're altered by the Trundle. That can make things very, very difficult. And I do think this is a great game for Trundle, not only because of the 1v1 matchup, but because of, again, as we kind of talked about yesterday, or rather in the, in the earlier game, this is all magic damage on the top side of the map. So when he does eventually itemize into something like a Spirit Visage, that works against the Corky, that works against the Gragas, and that works against the Cho'Gath. The Jinx does not want to lane 1v1 against the Trundle, so anyone who will come and answer you is going to be easily handled by that magic resist. Now you say you're excited about the Trundle. You kind of sounded excited that Alfari got the Trundle. What kind of was that history for him in the ULCS tank? Playmaker, where did he come from? So you have to go back to when Misfits were in the Challenger series. Alfari was one of the big carries for the team coming into the LCS. And in his first split in spring, he was praised as being one of the best top laners in the region. But when the meta shifted, and especially coming into summer, his performance started to decline. He didn't have that same level of impact. He wasn't as comfortable on all of these big tanks. But now that he's allowed to play things like the Camille, the Gnar, the Trundle, he just seems to be much more comfortable, a lot more dominant in how he plays these lanes, but World is a different ball game. MMD definitely has right. that experience advantage over Alfari. And while he may feel a little bit more comfortable playing this Trundle, it's a completely different environment to be that big carry in the top. It's also key to remember, MMD doesn't have to win lane against That's the Trundle true. to win yeah. the game, exactly. right? Good point. If you can neutralize this guy, if you keep him from killing your turrets, if you're just farming around even, then you've done your job and more as the Cho'Gath in this matchup because you are going to be able to join the team fights. You are going to have a much easier time of adding that effectiveness. So we'll see how he's going to be able to do. A lot of love and vision towards the bottom side of mid lane here for Misfits. Max Laura seems to prioritize it quite a bit. Cloud Drake is there, so that's not going to be what they're hungry for. But maybe some type of play in that bot lane. So far backing for Han Sama and Ignar. We may see it soon. Just got to quickly touch on Power of Evil's build. You'll notice that there is a blasting wand mm -hmm. in the inventory right now. He's ready to blast. He could very well be on his way to building a Rod of Ages into a Nash's tooth. A little bit unconventional, something very, very unique that only Parabubal does. We go more into it if he decides to go that way, but just keep your eyes on Parabubal because he is known to innovate within the EULs. And then when he wins it with it at Worlds, everybody. Everyone will do it. Here That'll we go. Be it. <laughs> the roller coaster begins. Personally, not a fan of the Nash's tooth. Not a fan at all. <laughs> no, I am not, not a fan. Not many people are, but it looks like right but now Power Parabubal is. They're trying to challenge this blue buff right now. Whoa, Maple with interesting pathing there to see what he can find. And 
He finds himself six feet under. First blood for Power of Evil. Great play there from Maxwell and Power of Evil. Full commitment as well. Both flashing over. Nail the ultimates there. And they're going to pick up first blood. You have to criticize flash rules because they wanted to try and contest this blue. They knew they had push on bot. They felt like they had push in mid. And the map was in their favor to make this play happen. The problem is they did not coordinate the play together. Maple was not expecting two people to flash over the wall and just collapse on one of the flanking sides and he wasn't in a great position to help the team secure this kit. Uh, oh, this that buff. ward. And it may have made them a bit more confident because they had TP advantage, but you can see the top laners running into each other, so no chance for Cho'Gath to actually join here. Yeah. Just a well-executed play, capitalizing on the mistake from Maple. And Misfits already off to a much better start than they were yesterday. <laughs> That's definitely true. <laughs> it's going to have to be. We're just at the beginning of this game, but obviously Misfits and Flash Rolls will face the two tougher in the group. Misfits for TSM, Flash Rolls as well on the other side. Have their work cut out for them as they have to face w Team WE. So Team WE kind of angry on their end. TSM playing very well. Both of these guys don't really have room to make mistakes. Flash Rolls, they're not looking to make mistakes in the bottom lane either. They just yeah. continue to push onto the tower. And someone does have a slight level advantage over Betty. Not entirely sure how that came to be. Perhaps Ignar went for a bit of a wander. But either way, the fact that he is level 7 will give him a bit of additional stats, but he is falling behind in the CS department due to the relentless pressure that we've seen from Betty and Swarm. And critically as well, they are getting some turret pressure down. Misfits, it's okay to be down a little bit of farm, but you don't want to be giving up too much turret damage. Yeah. You need to wave clear aggressively. You need to keep that turret alive, because if Jinx, Lulu can take an early turret here, they can transition that over towards mid lane or go top lane and start to pressure you around the map. And if Trundle is forced into grouping, if Trundle is forced out of his laning phase, that's when this champion starts to struggle a lot more. So it's important to keep your turrets alive, to keep Trundle in an isolated 1v1. Alfari playing smart, making sure to get in for the blast. Cones use his vision wards to clear everything out on the top side so he can stand on an island. Like we said, MMD doing the same thing. We'll have to see who explodes more in that first fight. Maybe <laughs> MMD gets a good chomp down and turns everything around. All the other lanes, though, very, very close here as we see Carson getting engaged on in mid. Power of Evil feels like they are strong enough. Alt for alt and one more to boot. Coming out of Max Lore with Sejuani. The legendary duel of Maple and Casa has been talked about and known about for an extremely long time. But I had the opportunity to chat with uh, Power of Evil, and he was very much like, coming into this world, he feels that both Max Lore and Power have one of the best duo synergies in this group. They think they work so well together as a duo. And he said the only ones we're concerned about are Maple and Casa. But so far in this game, they are putting the legends to the test. They are applying <laughs> so much pressure, and they're the ones that have been able to find that first early kill, but you can never count out Maple and Carson. They are, no, they are legends within their region and the world for a reason. Certainly are, and maybe they should have been a little bit more concerned about Shie and Kaji. <laughs> maybe they should have been. <laughs> uh, but they're doing well against Maple and Carson. You gotta give them that, and they have been going up in the pressure so far. Uh, forcing out the flash from Karsa is going to give them even more of an advantage. You can see that Maxlor has really been playing very heavily around his mid laner, right. always in the back pocket, trying to allow Power of Evil to apply this pressure to push up, knowing that his Sejuani is there to defend. And now I think the onus is on Misfits to try and look for a play up topside, because what you'll notice is MMD has picked himself up. He's warded, uh, not the Warden's Bell, the Bramble Vest, and that's going to make the Trundle's life a little bit difficult, because he still has a lot of wave case cells, a lot of push, but now that MMD has some levels under his belt, he has that same level of wave clear. And I think that the best case scenario for Misfits is if they can take that top tower down, it gives Alfari a lot more freedom, a lot more options to try and uh, move around the map and, and start having an impact elsewhere. They may actually look to try to go for something here. I mean, they know they haven't been spotted in that one bush, but Maxlor is going to back off. And while the Bramble Vest certainly does help Cho'Gath in the direct trades, one of the ways you can kind of play around this as a Trundle is simply you do your trade, you lose a little bit of health, then you stop hitting the, the Cho'Gath, you clear out the mini wave, you're healing back up from your passive, from everything dying around you, and the Bramble Vest is not applying the healing debuff unless you actually choose to apply it to yourself. So certainly are ways to play around that. It also is going to be a Ravenous Hydra as he picks up the yep. pickaxe. So he is going. He's going full carry mode. He's going for the split push style build. And I, I do think that it is a good choice. He grabs some early Merc Treads, try to keep himself a little bit more safe. And I think Ravenous Hydra into something like a Spirit Visage or an Adaptive Helm will be a very strong build in this game. 
Carsa. Waiting patiently. Feels like something's on the other end. He's looking at Power of Evil in mid lane. Final 136 for him. Finishing up first item, Rod of Ages. Sork Boots to go on to Orianna in a little scale build there. It looks like they actually want to try to contest the blue buff again as it comes up here from Misfits. They did get punished for this last time. And Misfits is kind of collapsing up from the bot lane, but you can see they were encroaching a little bit over as that blue buff was coming up. Good spike here. Maple got the Triforce. BF Sword and Zeal on the side of Betty that has pretty good damage if they want to try to close in on to something. But it looks like Misfits going to act a little sooner. I like the Flash Rules are still trying to be proactive in the early game. They realize that, yes, okay, Power View was, was able to get that first kill, but that shouldn't dissuade them from knowing that they are stronger at this point in the game. As you right, rightly identified, Riv, the, the Trinity Force, big power spike for the Corky and Braga. Does have a fair amount of damage, especially with the Cinder Hole completed, but it seems they're just going to concede for the time being. I think this next dragon, though, is going to be a big one as the oh, Infernal yeah. does come up. I do expect Flash Wolves to look to force around that objective and try to push Trundle into a team fight where he may be at a disadvantage in the earlier stages of the game. And you can see they're moving around. They're trying to get the scuttle. They're trying to fight back for vision. All their picks are on the bottom side of the map, although Misfits did have a chance to clear one or two out. This is very clearly where the focus will be. And Misfits is going to have to make some tough decisions on if they want to challenge for this or not. Alfari well, got to be calling that he is losing vision of MMD in that top lane. They got to make sure that they can get away from that Cho'Gath. They aren't guaranteed the initiation with a, a cast from Gragas, a flash in from Gragas. He's putting himself in a dangerous spot. So like you said, if Alfari can keep that push on the side lane, MMD's pressure could be lost in the teleports. But you're seeing MMD now is the one with the push level 11. Has plenty of levels under his belt. The wave clear is getting excessive and Alfari, he has to start respecting it because Talk about vision, there's very little vision for him in the top side of the map. All of it has been invested towards the bot side in anticipation of the Infernal Drake that will be spawning soon. So he's now the one playing a little bit more on the reserve and a little bit yeah. more on the back foot, showing that respect. And any time the Gragas could be up there, you have to show the respect. And the fact that Maple, Maple has the package yeah. <laughs> also means you have to worry about him as well. So I do think that Elfari certainly is in the strong position in the 1v1 right now. But he always has to keep in mind, where are his opponents? What else could they be doing? It looks like Flash Wolves, knowing that this 1v1 oh. could become problematic, are going to make an early swap up to the top side. They could be going for the Rift Herald, utilizing this to actually knock down an early turret, which I think is a great move, because already four men up on the top side. No one from Misfits is out on the map. They're not getting anything done right now, and they can very easily transition this up and attack Trundle, who will not be able to safely wave clear, but they are going to trade it for an Infernal if they do so. What a great play from Flash Rolls. Recognize that they got the first back. They Man were Infernal? faster on the play. They were so quick to take down that objective, but Han Summer and Ignor also broke to the mid, and now Flash Rolls are committing their TP. Maybe a fight? It looks like Misfits, they're just going to disengage. Looks like they've actually fizzled out the top play from Flash Wolves as well, but the Dragon goes away, so it's who makes that next opening that window that either team can use. That Infernal is there, 17 minutes in, and Betty's gonna get a slight push on this turret before he gets met by MS, uh, yeah. Misfits. Misfits is actually committing their teleport to make this lane swap happen more quickly. They're sending their bot lane top, but they're taking a lot of damage on the turret. Trundle is on bot side, and they're going for Maple. Right in his face, all oh, the silence on two. Power of Evil does not let him come back for the kill. It is gonna be a turret going down on the top side, but the fight's still happening in the mid lane. MMD low, looking to get the chomps down, and he is not able to go, or is not going to do so onto Max Lore. Power of Evil, no kill either. Flash Wolves did get the first turret on the top side, so more gold in the pocket of Betty, but Alfari also getting some free time down here yeah. on the bot side, and they need to try to transition this into war, because I do think committing the teleport means Trundle is now locked into the bot side around this Infernal Dragon. Otherwise, Misfits would just have to give it up. You can see the pings, though, coming down from the Flash Wolves. Their eyes are towards the Infernal Drake. They want to make sure that they do not give up this objective with Trundle on the bot side, who is now going back. He needs to spend that gold while Betty and Sora still have pressure in the mid. They're going to keep wave clearing. And they could also send their Corky up to the top side, because remember, he still has his TP, even though MMD does not. And that's why I really kind of question the TP from the Trundle, just to kind of get a little bit more minions, get that push going a little bit earlier. It feels like he should have actually headed down bot side earlier or just accepted the fact that he's going to lose some farm and, and delay that because this is giving such an advantage to Flash yeah. Wolves. As soon as you see yeah, the bot lane up exactly. here, Flash Wolves starts up the dragon. So 
this to me from Misfits is kind of a mismanagement of the resources on the map and it doesn't feel like they're allocating their lanes properly. The fact that you're giving up an infernal at the same time as you're losing mid lane and you're not really getting anything in either of the side lanes is very problematic. To me it feels like the Misfits are playing much more towards making sure that their laners are still farming well. They're making sure that they're playing towards their power spike. Yeah. They don't want to run the risk of going for a preemptive fight early on into the game that could give Flash Wolves that early lead. Because the big thing about Flash Wolves is they're known for getting that early lead. They're known for holding onto it and then running away with it. And while LMS as a region are known for playing a little bit slower, Flash Wolves are the only team that slightly yep. deviate from that. So Misfits demonstrating that respect and just waiting for that late game team fighting power that they have. And if you're confident that Alfari can take over the game in his side lane, then it's okay to give up something here and there, right? They give up a couple dragons and you just try to put all the eggs in the trundle basket because as he, as we said, if he itemizes into MR as he's going to do, he already has a Spirit Cal. He's going to be getting probably a Spirit Visage next, perhaps even an Adaptive, which is extremely effective both against Shogat and the Corky. He's basically saying, I'm not big enough yet because MMD is not big <laughs> enough yet. <laughs> exactly. So I'm just waiting on the timer. Got to quickly use this opportunity to talk about Power of Evil's build. Um, you see it a lot over in Europe. What do you, mean? You, you can hear the disappointment in my voice because many analysts are not a massive fan of it, but I want to give you the logic that Power of Evil has with going towards this itemization. Now, right. typically you see Morel and Omicron into something like uh, a Haunting Guys, as an example. And that's very conventional. It gives you a lot of early magic damage. It gives you plenty of mana and mana regeneration. But Power of Evil thinks, okay, I want a low mobility mid lane mate. I want a bit of beef behind my butt. So I'm going to make sure I stack some health and I still have that mana from the... Uh, I still have that mana available from the Rod of Ages. Yep. On top of that, he thinks that he needs to add to that by getting the ability power and cooldown reduction from the Nash's Tooth. But also, he feels that with the passive of Oriana, he Black can utilize up. additional damage, especially against these frontline tanks. So he's building towards these late game fights where he's just going to kill the frontline much faster than he thinks he could with a more conventional build. And I do think it works out if you're able to actually sit and get a lot of auto attacks That's off. That's the crucial thing. But the problem comes when you're threatened by something like a Gragas, when you're constantly having to reposition, yes. when you're moving nonstop around the map, because Orianna is able to move her ball around without actually stopping and, and commanding. Right. You can do it while you're moving. You cannot auto attack really while you're in, in retreat. And one misposition on an Orianna can cost you. So that is really the concern. It's the fine line that he's trying to walk. He's trying to maximize his damage and saying that he's going to be able to do that. Yeah, so you got to watch those autos, those little clockworks, <laughs> because those are going to be pivotal oh, as Flash Wolves are string around the Baron right now. That Baron fit has a lot of pink wards. There's three. It's very, very clear of it. <laughs> There's for Thank sure nothing in there. It is secure at the moment. Yeah. Maple getting a, as we see, is already used, a Quicksilver Sash. It has been a face-to-face -face encounter with Maxlor every time he can get that Sezwani ultimate onto Maple. So he says, no more of that. I'm going to keep myself safe so the team can focus on their positioning. And that's exactly what we're talking about right now is who's going to have better positioning in these fights because they have a lot of ways to displace and put each other in a different spot. Now, I feel like the Flash Pools are good and ready to fight right now. They have two items on Betty. They have MMD that has two items as well with the Warmogs to add to that. Yeah. And all Misfits are waiting for is the second item to be finished for Han Slama. Then both teams are in a good position. They both feel they've hit solid spikes. It's all going to be, as you rightly said, about the engages and how they play. Because remember, Apart, he kind of wants to split push. That's kind of his goal yeah. with this game. He kind of wants to keep Flash Wolves separated. But that doesn't mean that their team fighting is weak. Cogmore, Sejuani, Orianna, especially with a Janna to reset, there are so many tools in their kit that allowed them to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Flash Wolves. But Flash Wolves, their engagement seems that bit stronger with the Gragas, with the potential Cho'Gath flank. It seems like that they're more than ready to kick off that fight against Mizzou. It also seems that Flash Wolves really wants to put the attention around Baron to draw Alfari out of the side lane. Anytime Alfari shows in a side lane, they want him to be worried that they are going to do the Baron. They want to be able to force out teleports early. For now, he is by himself down in the bot lane. It looks like Corky may be the one getting sent down. Karsa not feeling good. Flash for Flash, the ultimate from Max Lord. Cask is going to go out as Karsa pours one out for the homies. He gets himself out safe. 23 and a half minutes in, it looks like. Misfits felt they were strong enough in that position to make something happen, and this may be the mid turn for them. Now, this is a pretty big deal for Misfits because one of the uh, interesting stats that we have about them is that during the regular season and through playoffs, if Misfits are a deficit at 20 minutes, any kind of deficit at 20 minutes, they had a 3-11 and 11 
went to loss record. They are not a good team at playing from behind. So it's very important for them to be able to get that lead. And so far, they've been able to hold a very steady advantage, but the game is still very even given the yep. state of effects. I think Ward's coming out as well means misfits and where they place them will show us their comfort. How far do they want to push these forward? Uh, most are probably going in the Baron pit, as we have seen. It's kind of a bingo situation in there of where you can place them, or tic-tac-toe, if you will. But I believe in the next few minutes here, it's either that Mountain Drake that's going to get attention or this Baron. And I think for misfits, you could be pretty happy sitting defensively. They have strong scaling composition. They're trying to get time for Alfari in a side lane. And that's likely going to be a Randowitz he's building into. That's to actually true, group and try to team fight. Completely agree with you, but I want them to start killing each other. I feel like <laughs> I'm 25 with this guy. minutes in, 0 to 1 in kills. They've got items. Just you can fight now. Start playing around that Baron. Start forcing a couple of engages. Yes, Misfits. A team full of rookies. Whereas Flash Wolves, they've got those veterans. They've got the experience. <coughs> Excuse me. They've got the experience in their roster. And uh, all I want to see now is a bit, a bit of fight, a bit of murder going on in the ring. Yeah, I'm interest, uh, interested that you say that because Flash Wolves as well, when they played their game against TSM at times 5k up before their Barons, grabbing a Baron, being much more in control of it or feeling in control. Here, they're, they're giving respect, which is good to each team. Like I, I like what you're saying. Somebody's got to pull the trigger soon. The other thing you would like, though, I'm sure, Vedius, is Europe to get a win at Worlds. I am an unbiased <laughs> cat. I have no preference. Uh, but I'm sure it would be nice Ooh. for Europe to get their first win on the board. They could get a good trick here for Flash Walls. Maple in the bot lane, but he can still teleport up. Misfits may kind of feel a false sense of security here. Seeing him down there, and Alf Alfari may be taking the damage. He doesn't want to be taken from Maple. Maple, however, heads up early as it looks like MMD wants to start things soon. Yeah, a lot of posturing around the Baron. Misfits are trying to hold their defensive stance around that Baron, trying to keep their pink ward lineup alive, but it looks like Flash Walls will regain control of the Baron pit. Trundle is moving up for any potential Baron start that could be happening. But for now, Misfits has control of mid lane, so they can just try to push up and threaten this tier two tower, which makes Flash Wolves come down and allows you to go back up and control Baron. And the way position has happened so far for both teams, these teleports actually don't need to be used. Frozen Domain from Alfari, he gets up, so the pressure's still there. If one of these fights happens, the map gets completely opened up and they Either team can go wherever they want. The move initially looks promising for Misfits because mm -hmm. they move through mid. They cut off the entrance from Flash Wolves, who are now looking for a fight. The bay pillar goes out. Shockwave, that's going to be a big damage on MMD. He goes down before he can provide the damage or get a bite down. Betty's now the focus as he flashes away and control to Misfits. But Maple on the top side has not wavered. He's still going for the turret. Yeah, Maple split pushing on this quirky flashback to the TSM game where he was the yes. one creating cross map pressure. He's going to use the teleport to get out of there. He does secure a turret, but it costs him his summoner. Either way, that's a pretty even trade. Yeah, it, I think it was really smart from a uh, Maple to recognize, you know what, we're in a disadvantageous uh, position. There's no point me grouping up with my team. Right. Let's see if we can get something back. So he immediately moves up to the top. There's already a big wave he can take advantage of, and they get a tower plus the Mountain Drake going into their hands. So while Misfits getting a kill onto the top lane is great, they're not turning this into any objectives, Azale. And I feel like this is a big issue moving towards the Baron. Oh, the question is, can they get Karsa? If they can chase down Karsa, they might be able to go for the Baron here. And he is looking like he is in trouble, but Flash Wolves are going to be pushing up mid. Karsa getting taken down. That's going to be Betty and Sword Art on the mid lane turret. Alfari is coming up onto them and will really not be able to do much other than clear the wave that's going to drop right in front of him. Just gets the minions away, and the armor Flash. is added back. Beautiful job by Alfari. MMD is there for the safe escape for Betty and Sword Art. Now remember, there's no jungler for Flash Wolves. Misfits have all of their engage tools up and ready. And I feel like that without the smite, Misfits can just go to the Baron and force it. Flash Wolves either have to come and fight or run the risk of Misfits securing a big objective lead. Yeah, Misfits are starting it up. Power of Evil did go back to base, though, and he's a little bit late getting here. So we'll see if Flash Wolves can try to poke him off this Baron. Remember, Jinx has no Flash and is very vulnerable without it. MMD as well cannot get in. They're going to turn a beautiful Choice on the fight, and Max Lord could go down. Great shields to keep him alive, and that made Flash Wolves step one step further. Maple has to get out now. Betty's out of mana and can only use the short range gun as Misfits are looking for power in the mid lane. No flash, no flash on Betty. They get the shockwave onto him as well. He goes down. That's a quick silver sass. It doesn't even keep him alive as they try to get the Knight's Foul damage in from Carson. Maple is roaming around trying to stop them from getting any more. Yeah, Maple actually cut the wave there so right. they could not continue to push, but Misfits can go right back to 
the Baron. This is a five versus three. They need to actually force on something, but Maxlor looks like he's heading into the jungle, maybe going over to the Baron now. They're gonna Maple fly. is just so good at punishing every move that Misfits try to make, constantly getting something back for his team, but I don't know if he can stop this Baron. Yeah, they certainly can. I mean, there's there's only two Flash Wolves members over there. Uh, Carson would have to look for a Miracle Steal, but Power of Evil is zoning him out. This will be a Misfits Baron. Going to need it. Every lane has been pushed. They're still getting spikes and gold from the turrets, and Misfits really needed to recoup here. A great Baron. Five to zero as they control all kills on the map. Flash Wolves has been working around them up to this point. The rookie squad from the European LCS making their debut on the international stage are pushing Flash Wolves back. They had a nail biter of a game versus TSM yesterday, but they finally get themselves a Baron. This is right, Kate's again. Yeah, just watch the jinx in this fight. Betty is split up from his team. Maxlor throwing this edge one. He ultimate completely zoning him out. Just follow Betty. He can't actually contribute to this fight whatsoever. They almost killed Maxlor simply from the damage coming out of the Cho'Gath and Maple on this Corky, and then Betty getting chased down without the Flash. Alfari has the confidence to trap him with the Pillar. Flashing in there, and Power of Evil had to follow up. And this is the power you see of the wow. Trundle against someone like the Jinx. Han Sama doing so much work in that fight as well. He had a bad performance yesterday against Team WE. He was given more freedom, and while he fell behind in lane, he is stepping up this game. 2-0-1 having a good performance, but Maple has really been the star of Laterals. He is keeping them as well as he can still in this game. Eight pink wars now in the inventory is of Misfits. I always love looking at that. You know, it means surplus in gold and the ability to move up. Feel oh confident about where your wards are and where your teammate is. Alfari able to just live through what seems like a war all by himself. Maple, Sword Art, and Karsa can't even take him down to half as his team now comes to help him. And Maple's trying to get the last few shots in, but they could be routed at any moment on this second tier turret. And Alfari's right back to full health. That is the power of the Trumbull. Right. So much lifesteal and building, you know, this ran to his omen. Plus, oh, we may see Maxwell getting caught. Got him on the chompers, not gonna be too much Hansama. Oh my god, Hansama offering back a little oh. bit of the same medicine MMD could give. And the shield saves him from the Super Mega Death Rocket. Great body block from Max Thor as well, but through all the skirmishing in the jungle, Misfits finally secure themselves. A tier two tower, 5,000 gold in their favor, and they're looking for those inhibitors. They're gonna get bot lane as well here. Maple could not hold on against Alfari. Alfari is putting on the pressure, and no one can answer him in this side lane. We really are seeing. Misfits play an excellent game, playing to their win conditions, not overextending, allowing Alfari to drop multiple members down, which opens up the map. And this is how Misfits like to play the game. This is why they're so reliant on a lead, because when they're the ones dictating the pace of the game, that is where we can see the true strength of this squad. They work well as a team. They're not known for having individual superstars, but when they come together, it is where you see this team really shine. And Alfari is still gigantic, even going for the Ravenous. He's level 17 to MMD's 15, and he is just walking in there and stealing everything that he needs as the Trundle. I mean, they never were able to force Alfari into team fights before he actually started to build up his tankiness, before he got to the Spirit Visage. He was able to sit in the side lane and farm for so long, yeah. which is exactly what he wants to do. But now we have to think about M Misfit's ability to close, because it doesn't matter how well you play at this point in the game, it's all about taking down that Nexus. And we remember that Flash Wolves yesterday, they had a long drawn out game against TSM because they couldn't quite get that final push into the base. They could not quite find that final game ending play. And it's now gonna be on them to try and do the same thing against TSM. They have to try and stall this game out. And we've seen them do it once before. And I think for Flash Wolves, Really, the ability to come back in this game is going to hinge massively on Karsa. Karsa needs to ult someone in. He needs to knock in the Orianna or this Kog'Maw, or I really do not see a way for them to win the team fights in the current state. Because Trundle is going to be so yeah. tanky when he ults up the Cho'Gath, and Cho'Gath will be getting shredded by these very powerful carries, which is just exacerbated by the fact that Power of Evil has this auto-attacking build and he's going to be putting out so much DPS. If you can't put pressure on him, yeah. he gets the free auto. He's going to do even more damage. And the trade in the end for Champion Select was that Lulu for the Janna, which makes it even harder for Flash Wolves this late in the game to even get that cask in there. He's got to get out with the one person and hope that it's not Ignar to save the fight. I know Flash Wolves, they had great objective control in the early game. We saw multiple times, every time Misfits made a move, Flash Wolves were quick to punish. They were sitting on three drakes, Cloud, uh, Infernal, and the Mountain. 
And we thought that in terms of how well they were trading all these things, especially with the early Rift Herald, Misfits were the ones losing out, but it all came down to that Baron. Misfits find the great fight. They found that big objective, and now they are the ones that have this, well, not even tower advantage, because Maple has been able to yeah. continue <laughs> and keep the towers even. Five they do have a the goal. Number. They do, they yep. do have that. And you can see the Kogma is getting to such a strong point. I actually do like the purchase of the GA from Hansama, because once again, think about how your opponents win the game. Well, if Hansama gets cast in and instantly dies, well, that's one way to lose. But with the GA, it gives them a second chance to kind of reestablish their battle lines, mm. to have Ignar pick him back up after the GA procs. And we could see him still turn around to fight, even with an early kill on Kogma. All the Quicksilver Sashes and Mikhail's in the inventory. Let's see if it helps. Flash Wolves get out of this engage. They are able to back off just a little bit from Maxlore. And it looks like they have a chance to say what for as they get themselves back in position. One big ultimate used there by Maxlore. None yet from the Flash Wolves. They're looking for a fight. Maple on the flank. Oh, waiting for a few shots from Sama. He feels good to get in after the Void Ooze, or Void Slobber, I should say, coming in from the Pup Maw. Both teams, they're just waiting for the Baron to respawn. Misfits need to get their sideways under control. So Afari, he's off bot. Uh, Hansama, he's on his way up to the top lane. Baron spawning in about one minute's time. And I feel like this Baron could very well be the determining factor in this game. Yeah, it really could. And that's why vision and control early is going to be so important around it. So if Misfits control the waves, if they keep Flash Wolves penned up in their base, they can not actually get wards out there to properly take a fight. But Karsa is now kind of venturing out, trying mm. to reestablish some of their vision control. And we'll see if Misfits can stop this. Very interesting. Farming, few objectives, but no kills are any of the items here for Flash Wolves. They haven't really been able to bring any pocket change from that, just from Misfits controlling the fight. But for Flash Wolves to get to the other side of the map, we are going to have to see Misfits go down. However, it has been much in their control up here to 35 and a half minutes in. 20 seconds on to Baron. We're going to see this float around the top side as they jockey for position. And like we said, those GAs are starting to come out, so these fights are going to go. It is on the side haul. with the package, so they do have to show some respect to this. Package is back, not able to use it right away. Redemption goes out deep into the fight to get the heals down. MMD throws on the Gargoyle Stoneplate. You haven't seen Subjugate yet. Alfari still has it. Thanks, Lord. He lost a fair amount of health, but... He does not have the Warmog, so he's not going to instantly regenerate that, but Misfits, they're setting up for a trap. They see Maple, not going to fall for him. Oh, Howling Gale kind of gives away their positioning. A very nice Team pillar split, though, stops into with the... one Shockwave onto Karsa. That's going to be the knockdown from him as Power of Evil comes up with the kill. Maple still trying to stay on the side. Can't get the firing in, and the Flash Wolves cannot answer back. He had again, Betty got split from the team, had to run the long way around. By the time he arrives, Kars is already dead, and Misfits can go right back to the Baron. They can actually look to force this, but you can see Maple is trying to go for some secret agents. In Classic he's Maple. For the slip push. He's on the side lane again. He's trying to take advantage, but Misfits, they shred through this Baron. They're going to get the empowered recalls, and they extend their gold lead to 8,000. Looks like he won't go too far here knowing that home guard off the base, and we'll see this fight one more time. The pressure being put in, the AD carries are split to the bot side. Betty decides it's not safe to run up to his team. Just a nice pillar, really catching a lot of people out from Alfari there, and didn't even have to commit the ultimate. Exactly. I think that's so crucial to recognize how quickly Misfits shred through the front line of Flash Wolves without even needing the subjugate. You add to the fact that this trundle is just going to steal all the resistances away, those tanks are going to melt. They're going to be more like paper airplanes than anything else. <laughs> Well, thankfully for Flash Wolves, at least, Betty has completed his last Whisper item. Yeah, that's so, exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, he is at a point now with this Mortal Reminder that he can put out a lot of damage. This is a very strong member, and Maple still quite strong himself you know, with a few items on these 80 carries. So they do still have their opportunities, and we have to see Misfits look to quickly and cleanly close out this game. That is what we're trying to measure now. They have a monumental advantage. They have the Baron buff. Everything is in their corner. It's just what can they do with it. And the game is what uh, I'm sure many yeah. European bands are hoping for. Uh, Flash Wolves, they have been able to hold on to an impressive base defense against TSM yesterday. But the big difference is that TSM moved up as a five-man, whereas Misfits, they're playing on all three lanes. No one could really hold off Alfari on this trundle. He has a four to 5,000 gold lead over his lane counterpart, two levels up as well. 
We talked about how when he's put on the carries, he can perform and he feels more comfortable, but he's being locked up. Ooh, Alfari, possibly the first one going down, but what is the rest of the team doing? He'll actually live pulling two members, three members towards the top side of the map. That means inhibitors going down to the bottom side just sub 40 minutes. Misfits finally break the base and they're looking for more. And Alfari is TPing back, so they want to commit to this push. They still have a minion wave in the mid lane. They can go straight over for that Karsa. Ooh, Karsa, look at himself get out. safety. Body slam away, but that's a bit of his hidden gauge. That Flash is also down. We're looking at most of the summoners from the side of Flash Wolf, so they possibly could make a play on a Misfits mistake. But man, they have been far from making mistakes for the past 30 minutes. Misfits can be happy with the bot lane inhibitor because the Elder Dragon is just about to spawn. No, they don't have three drakes under their belt, but picking up this, this event objective is still going to be advantageous right. towards them trying to end this game. They're taking it slow, they're taking it patient. They do not want to run any risks as Misfits are well on their way to becoming the first European team to get their win at the World's Group stage. Everybody actually showing up from the team. It has to feel good all around for these newcomers on the world stage. Power of Evil, full kill participation right now. Han Sama with his hands in that pie too. Everybody has had a part in this. Betty completed his sixth item just now, so he is full build, fully online, and so much of the onus in these team fights is going to come onto the Shinx. He can no longer afford to play passively. He needs to come up with a big play for Flash Wolves to stay alive in this game. But you could just see how little damage he was doing to these tanks, they decided to go for the Randuin to limit the bonus attack speed that Jinx naturally gets from her Q. And it's just, you don't have the same tank shredding power that Han is going to have. So if it comes down to these full 5v5s, I feel like Misfits has the advantage to shred through the tanks and they go for the dive. Right through, watching Betty on the backside, getting damage onto Afari. Where are those AD carries? Han Sama just on the right. Shockwave hits onto Maple and almost depletes him immediately. The rest of the team's able to stand tall and deplete that minion wave as top lane's pushing. They have to respect it. A little janitorial duty for Misfits before they're back to the front side of Flash Wolf's base. A bit of an over-aggressive dive there and I just feel like with the Elder Dragon on you, with bottom inhibitor down, have your Trundle split push. It's been proven that multiple members have to come to him to actually answer that guy in a side lane and that dive you know, does buy Flash Wolves a couple more minutes. I think that this is, uh, the decision making for Misfits was to use the Elder Drake to try uh, and rush it down because they only had a little bit of time left on the Baron so they wanted to combine both buffs together but once the dive happened they realized okay we need to go back we need to spend our gold we need to reset restock on Vision as well and now you can see multiple members reaching that full build status but it's the same for Flash Wolves you already mentioned Betty but look at Maple as well True Force, Phantom Dancer, Infinity yeah. Edge he's near full build completion as well and MMT he's getting tankier by the minute against these world-class teams you always have to be worried about how many opportunities you give exactly. them how many chances are you going to give Karsa to find that body slam bash to find the carry and knock them in and turn this game around and perhaps even end the game on one dominant fight as we saw in TSM's game just early Maxlor just missing. The pressure relieved a little bit. Maple feels nice to stand in the front line. Are they going to go up towards Alfari, though, on this one? Flash and heal there going out of Sword Art. They managed to get both summoner spells out from Sword Art, but it seems that Misfits, they're too afraid to commit. The wave clip from Flash Wolves is surprisingly strong, and you have the Cho'Gath, the, uh, the Corgi, and yep. the Jinx as well. So Misfits, they're waiting for their third Baron of the game. It's spawning in about a minute and a half. They've done a great job of controlling it so far in this game, and I feel like they're just waiting for the, the best case scenario for them to perform again. I think the fact that the Jinx went Hurricane instead of something like a Static Shiv Rapid Fire, which we've seen a lot more commonly these days, was also a very intelligent choice when you are on the back foot, getting the additional wave clear in your rocket form with that Hurricane. One crit can just clear out a minion wave, essentially. So it really does do a good job of buying time. And it's going to be about the next Baron for Misfits now. They haven't really been able to get much with this inhibitor down. It's actually going to be respawning relatively soon on the bot side of the map. So. Not even sure that's going to be down for the coming Baron. And interestingly, Afari just sold his Randuins for a Frozen Heart. An item that we haven't seen for a while, but it's going to be very effective against this double AD carry composition. It really is, and also the additional CDR is actually very big for the Trundle. Not only for the ultimate, but when you have full CDR on a Trundle with the pillar as he's now at 40%, it's a very low cooldown. Six seconds, I believe. Yeah, you can have so much disruption in a team fight simply by zoning people out, by catching people in. And it really is an underrated part of the Trundle kit. Seems like 
the last fight for Misfits as they went into the mid lane, the dive was pulled off of. Good to see that they don't go too far, but too hesitant can definitely be a problem, and I think that's what we're getting into here. Giving a chance, as you said, for Karsu to find that in. If it's Ignar that goes down, there's a lot more chase potential here for Flash Wolves to continue that fight. It's really just our folly to keep them back. We're gonna see Baron coming up, but it's gonna be all about the front of the base here. Misfits does not want to relieve the pressure. I mean, MMD was down multiple levels to Alfara. He's now level 18. All of the carries are kind game. of starting to hit these higher level points. Karsa's still down. Betty's still down one level, but they are catching up, and Misfits know they need to be able to posture around this Baron. Their bottom inhibitor has respawned critically for Flash Wolves, but Misfits looking for the fight. Oh, that's going to be a deleted Karsa. There's the shield coming out. Beautiful save on the Wild Ghost. Fast fingers from Sword Art to get that save, and now they have a chance to look again at the Baron. So the jungler is still alive. His regeneration is pretty rapid, but Misfits, they're on the Baron first. Let's see if Flash Wolves can do anything. Down to 6,000 immediately. That's half the Baron's health. Going they off. actually don't want to chance it. Maple could be really firing in the damage from the side. MMD so far behind, but they don't have that vision just of him yet. They get the Baron, not a problem. They're heading topside as the wave is right there with them. Exactly that, Misfits. They're gonna try and take advantage of the wave that's already stacked up. You can see Maple and Betty, the two core wave clearers, trying to get back as fast as they can. Flashles trying to intercept this Misfits squad, but they have their eyes on another inhibitor tower. Just about two and a half waves as they approach. MMD looking for that rupture that would stop. Whoa, they get a hit onto Han Sama. Flashback, beautiful cleanse there to keep himself alive. The cast did not do much, and they shut down Karsa as he tried to get in. Maple is almost melee range before fire and damage onto Han Sama. Very scary stuff from Flash Wolves as they are losing the inhibitor turret and trying to defend with everything they have left. Betty just cannot hit through these tanks. He is trying his best to do that much work, but unfortunately... Oh, they're teeping in behind. They're actually trying to cut the wave here. This is going to be huge. Maple's going to be flying through damage onto Max Lore. It's going to be Alfari as well. He says, this is our side of the map. Get back over there. And now Misfits have repositioning again on that top lane. Betty backing up, kiting as much as possible to clear out the waves before they approach the turret. They only oh, have that very low. A hit on Sama. That's without Betty, Betty. cleanse. It's 1-2 they rinse and repeat. Max Lore and the rest of the team behind their AD carry, behind Hansama as he respawns on the Guardian Angel. And they're gonna be looking for the win. Does Europe find it here? 46 minutes in. Misfits only almost doubling the time of their first game here as they persevere through Flash Wolves. And there's the power of the Nash's tooth. Power of Evil gets the kill down on the Betty. They've got their eyes on the Nexus and Misfits are looking for their first win at Worlds. Carson's back up though. Maple is still alive. There are some very low health bars on Misfits. Will they commit for this. Last Nexus turret in their eyes. Karsa on the right side. Maxlor says, I give up my life for this and tries to put himself in front. Karsa low on health. It's going to be Maple as well. Dives into the middle. Misfits have locked down the victory. Misfits are looking at the Nexus and they will pull out the win the at European, the 2017 group stage. The European LCS is going to grab their first win from the unlikeliest of sources. Misfits so many people underestimating them. They pick up a big win against Flash Wolves here. Considered the underdogs by almost everyone in this group and really showing it may not be just that three-man race. It's four. Everyone is in the running for these top two spots. And you've got to feel happy for the rookie squad. This is the first time that any of these players have made it to the World Championship. Power of Evil has been trying for a very long time with many different teams but it is with all these young players that they're able to do it, and they're able to get their first win against the Flash Wolves, a Fable team. They had such a close game against TSM yesterday, and we were expecting Flash Wolves to be the heavy favorites, but it's Misfits that were able to get themselves the win. And this is a deathless game from Misfits. Yes. This is 12 to zero over the Flash Wolves. Yes, they gave up some turrets. Yes, they gave up some dragons. It is not a perfect game, but they almost got a perfect game yesterday by WE, and they turn around today and put up this sort of a performance against the best team from the LMS, someone with a storied history. This is going to give so much confidence to the Misfits. And it makes this group so much spicier as well, because now you have uh, TSM sitting at the top of the group, WE 1-1, one and one. Misfits are 1-1, one and one. and Flash Wolves surprisingly at the bottom of the group, but everyone can still take games off of everyone, and things just get even more exciting. And that's what we were saying just at the beginning there, around nine minutes in, I was like, yeah, Flash Wolves has a, a pretty angry Team WE to go after. The TSM's feeling great, so Misfits is gonna have to come out of this firing, and they absolutely did. So great to see that Misfits in this game, with that 12 to 0, it wasn't 
because of a ton of Janna disengages or heals, they were positioning together. They weren't going for too much. They weren't overreaching, and that's very uncharacteristic of a new team on the stage. You you see that guy with low health, and everybody says go, but they were able to hold off this time. Yeah, I mean, they, they played very well to their win conditions, and I'm happy to see not only a trundle come out, but a trundle well executed, because I think this is something that should be a right. staple of this world's meta. And it'll be interesting to see if any other teams kind of stand up and take notice of, of how effective this pick can be, not only in a side lane, but also in team fights against these super tanks. But I'm also a little surprised by Cast's performance in this game. I felt like his impact was relatively yeah. low. The fact that Flash Wolves did get zero kills in this game was because they were very rarely the ones to start off these fights. They were rarely the ones to really get those engages, and they just waited too long. It was misfits that were so often the ones that starting off the fights. So and while very regularly, they were actually going even in terms of objectives because of Maple, it was really only Maple that was keeping Flash Wolves even relatively in that game. So I feel like Flash Wolves, they need to go back to the drawing board and, uh, and I'd like to see a little bit of a step up from Carson for the rest of the And we actually are going to be able to, uh, be able to. We are getting an interview with Maxlor coming up in this. Kind of your thoughts about his play from what we have seen, what you've seen in the, in the split to now here at Worlds. Stepping up, kind of the same, is this what you expected from him? Uh, I think that uh, Max Thor, he had a lot of confidence going into Worlds. Something that you hear from him during the regular season is, I think that when I go into a game, I have to think I'm going to win. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I'm already losing before we even go into <laughs> Champions League. So every day he wakes up, he, he gets out of bed, and he just thinks to himself, yeah, I'm going to win today. And he says that to him <laughs> every good. day, every single time, whenever he's going into a game. And I feel like... To a degree, there's a bit of British banter in there, but at the same time, it's also just him trying to get his confidence up and, and just keep his team motivated too, because they are young players, they are all very nervous, and for the team to get themselves a win today has certainly got to mean a lot for all of them. I'm a strong believer in the fact that you have to believe you are the best to become the best. Exactly. Whether you are now or not <laughs> is not important. You manifest it, it'll happen. It's time now to send it over to Shox, who is ready with Misfits Jungler. Thank you very much, guys. And I got to say, uh, I'm happy to finally be interviewing an EU LCS team here at Worlds, but I don't want to take anything away from Misfits and Maxor. Maxor, it is your first World Championship. It is your first win here. What does it mean for you to do this? And maybe it be in the beginning of a lot, a lot more. Well, firstly, I'd like to claim the trophy of winning the first game of EU. So G2 can't take that away from me, like they did playoffs, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> Secondly, it's pretty good. Uh, today coming in, we, were, we, did, we weren't really shaken up from the loss yesterday. However, like, I think we all gained more confidence coming in. We're more used to the stage and it's pretty bloody cold there, but now we're used to it. So we're playing a lot better, even though today we took the games, like they, they were pretty, pretty slow. I think we could have won faster, but that's just for review, right? So maybe tomorrow against TSM we'll win faster. Maybe tomorrow against TSM you'll win faster. You think you're gonna win regardless? Uh, it's 50-50. It's 50-50, all right. Uh, staying humble there. When I talked to you yesterday before the first match, we had a conversation. I said, well, you know, you guys have nothing to lose, obviously. And you said, hold on, hold on. That's not something I want to hear, because what's your perspective on you guys being here? Well, I, ve I feel like any team coming to Worlds is here to win the whole thing, not just make out of groups or come in here as a learning experience. I think that's like you're making the bar so low for yourself. So for us, at least myself, I want to win the whole thing. And for my team, we, like all my players, they want to win as much as possible, not just come here, learn, like take a small vacation at Worlds, you know, here in China. That's not how it goes. So we're all eager to win and hopefully we can make it. You know, that's a trigger word for a lot of European fans. And coincidentally, this is the first win for Europe, as you alluded to. What do you think is going on? Do you think it's going to turn around now that you guys got your first victory? Maybe G2 will follow up? Yeah, well, we had the thing, like whenever we, had, we went to a breakfast buffet with some of Fnatic or G2, we had a thing where it's like the first team that plays from EU, if they lose, the next team will lose. So hopefully like the trend continues and now G2 will win. All right, well, we'll see if that happens. Thank you very much, Max, or congratulations. Fantastic, a huge victory here for Misfits at Worlds. And now back to the guys at the desk. Thank you, Shox. They came here to win and win they did in this game against the Flash Wolves. EULCS picking up their first win of the group stages here. And as Azel mentioned, the surprise is that it comes from misfits of all the teams that are representing the European region. Yeah, and we talk about uh, the competitiveness now of Group D. You know, we saw Flash Wolves put up a very good fight against TSM. Misfits just kind of rolled over and died when they faced Team WE. But suddenly Misfits much more controlled, getting that composure back. And that's what's so impressive for me. It's their first time. It's a split full, uh, it's a team full of rookies. They get blasted yesterday and it's like, that's fine. Reset, play it again. Right. Improvement is what we needed <laughs> out of this team. 
I'm glad to hear that Max Lore said that he wasn't shaken up, that they're looking forward to possibly beating TSM on the 50-50. The confidence, right? You got to have the mindset if you want to make it. So I'm glad they find their place in Group D, unlike PoE's Oriana build, but that's for another time. Kobe, talk to me about the draft here because the trundle was locked in. Azale let out a thank you, God. Finally, we see it in the League of Tanks in the top lane. The trundle comes out. What are your thoughts? Well, the trundle is the story of this entire game. This is how Misfits won the game because, yes, they did make improvements, but there were a lot of mistakes for them early on in the game, too, around objective control, you know, and a lot of team play. But when you're drafting the trundle, playing to that split push, they're able to get a lot of these outside towers very quickly, and, and the gold was definitely there for them, even though the Dragons almost all, uh, especially in the early game, they did go over to Flash World. Yeah, huge props there. He not only flamed Horizon to his opponent, but he was also present in the team fight. So he's putting that much pressure into the side lanes while also being a big factor in the team fights against the Jinx. And that, well, that's what we wanted to see out of the Misfits, to see somebody else step up besides Power of Evil. Was it going to be Hansama or Alfari? Alfari has been known to be a very mechanically strong player. And when you give him a strong matchup of the Trundle into the Chogath, you can expect him to just pop off. And here he goes in the front line. You immediately just go into the Trundle MD. Everybody else, sure, that's a draw on the ulti with. But so far, he gets to be the front line and just wreck base. Yeah, Trundle plus Kogma, just absolutely Chogath's worst nightmare, right? They shred through immobile tanks like that. And he's able to even flash and create plays here with the limited CC that Trundle brings to the table. He's all over the place. Winning side lanes, you know, flashing in for the team, creating plays, and getting a lot of that advantage. Well, I do... Oh, go. Oh, all right. But the CC is not Wind just up. for catching, not just for catching somebody, though, for these hyper carries. You can also separate them from a fight. You just pop a pillar if they're too far away and no longer can then participate. So Trundle, while it's not as obvious as a Cho'Gath or a Maokai for what they bring to the team fight, he can be quite underrated and underestimated, and that's a big mistake to make. And what I wanted to talk about then was the Jinx pick, because Trundle was just Jinx's worst nightmare. You alluded to all of the hard CC and how hard it is for her to get out of there. Flash Wolves had the opportunity that they could have drafted the Galio. Like, you look back at this draft, it's Lulu, Kogma, Sejuani, Jinx, Gragas. There's no way anyone's ever going to expect the Jinx. Yeah, it's the Betty special, but you could have grabbed the Galio there. Yeah, well, so then let me ask you this. Four Flash Wolves now sitting at 0-2. What's the solution, right? Where do we look for them to make a change or a fix where they can start picking up wins in this group? It could be the draft, but Karsa has been underwhelming for me. Okay. Sure, the previous game was fine. The mid game and late is still a problem, but Karsa getting so picked off was just not very impressive for me. This guy has been a pillar for this team for a while, and this is why we've alluded to the LMS region being weaker than in previous years. But the most recent powerhouse for Flash Wolves has been Sword Art, and I actually think that moving towards the Ardent Sensor meta or being more of these mm. mage supports is actually taking a lot of power away from him. Thresh was his bread and butter. It was the Flash Wolves' primary champion, and he's not able to play that anymore. So I think a big issue is Maple's underperforming. What, he gave up first blood face checking in that blue buff. Karst is not having the same impact, but uh, Sword Art's also not really doing anything. Yeah, we had a great game on the Terek. Get him more champions like that, where he can impact these big team fights. Don't just put him on shield duty. I want to ask a similar question here for Misfits. As, yes, they picked up their first win. That's great, but it still took some time, right? It was a slow game. There was one play that developed that kind of broke it open for them. Still took an extra Baron to close it out. So where can they as well look to kind of improve, maybe shore up their early game or push their advantages more to find more success against a team like TSM or Team WE? I think it has to come through that early game team play. You know, a lot of the rotations that we talked about, uh, basically the order of the objectives that they're going for and a lot of the movement in between. All right, well, we'll see if the EULCS can pick up another win as G2 Esports step on stage for their fight versus 1907 Fenerbahce. Don't touch that browser. Oh, Maple with an interesting pathing there to see what he can find, and he finds himself six feet under. First blood for Power of Evil. Misfits are looking for power in the mid lane. No flash, no flash on Benny. They get the shockwave onto him as well. He goes down. That's a quick silver sass. It doesn't even keep him alive. They split, they split. They split. No, 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 Go, 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 Max Lore and the rest of the team behind the AD carry, behind Hansama as he respawns on the Guardian Angel. And they're going to be looking for the win. Misfits are looking at the Nexus, and they will pull out the win.